So what we want to do now is decide what we want to happen in the game, depending on the answer to this question. So if the food is equal to zero, we want it to do one thing. If the food, amount of food is not equal to zero, we want to do something else. And that's an if then else question. What we do is we put these little brackets in here and that's what we want to do if the answer to that question, so if the number of instances is zero, this is what we want it to do here. Now it might be that there'd be an else. The else would be if the answer to that question, so if the answer, so if there's actually five pieces of food left, the answer to that question is no. So if the amount of food is zero, do this, else, so if it isn't, do that. Now, in this particular instance, there isn't an else. What we've got here is a situation where if there is more than one zero pieces of food left, we just want to go on playing the game. So we're only interested in doing this if the answer to the question is yes, there is no food left. And what we want to do is we want to go to the next room. And we can put on the transition so we can have a insulation at the top. So what we're saying is, if there is no food left, go to the next room. Now, that's fine, and that's lovely. If we are in room zero, if I'm in room zero, and I go to eat the last piece of food, and the number of pieces of food goes to zero, and it'll say, right, if the number of pieces of food is zero, go to the next room. It can go from room zero to room one. If I'm in the room one and I eat the last piece of food, it can't go to the next room because there isn't one. I'm going to have two solutions to this. <coughs> number one, make an infinite number of rooms so that there never is a situation where there isn't a next room. Not a very practical solution. Or tell it what to do if there isn't another room. Now this is where we start getting what looks like quite complicated. Because what we're saying is, we're asking now two questions. We're saying, if all the food's gone and there's another room, go to it. Okay. So we ask the question, and we ask the question here, If the next room exists, so if there is another room, I've noticed my number of opening brackets and my number of closing brackets need to be the same. I actually don't need these, but if you, it just makes you see that you've got a question. And we're basically saying, is there another room? And have you eaten all the food? So if the answer to two questions is yes, go to the next room. Or what do we do if there isn't another room? And that is now where we do need the else. The else comes inside here. And we're going to put the else in there. So, is there any food left? No. Okay. Is there another room? Yes. I'll go to the next room. Okay. Is there any food left? No. Is there another room? No. Oh, in that case, or well, what we want to do... If there's no rooms left to go into, we could just restart the game, go back to the first room. But what I actually want to do is just call it game over. Say, so, right, that's OK. We've got to the end of the room. And on main two here, there's a button which says end the game. Well, we don't want to end it really suddenly. We want to tell the person what they've done. So we're going to put a little message in. And the message is... So well done, you have got to the end. So now what we're saying is, if there is another room, go to that next room. If there isn't another room, put the message on the screen, well done, you've got to the end and then end the game. 
These are called nested if questions, and it's really quite a complex idea when you write it down. And it isn't really because we do it all the time in conversation. We might sort of say, do you want to go to the cinema? Yeah, what do you want to go and see? And there are two questions. And the, the, second, the answer to the second question, of course, depends on the answer to the first question. The person says, no, I don't want to go to the cinema. And the second question might be, well, what do you want to do instead? So this idea that of, of, what, of having another question and what you do depends on the answer to the first question and then the answer to the second question is something we do quite normally. Let's have a test. So I'll put this up in my first room. There should hopefully just be one piece of food left. No, I've got that the wrong way around. Oh dear. So if I click onto here, that's room zero and that's room. Oh, and see the order they're in. So I want room one to be at the top. So I can actually drag them around. So I can, I can change the order of the rooms quite easily. So now when I press play, room one, comes before room zero. So I can change the order of the rooms around and that's more what I wanted. So what I want to see now is when I eat that last piece of food, it goes on to the next room. Now, if I take a, a second or two to just run around the maze, what should happen? See why it's handy to have a, a maze with hardly any food in it at all, because this is probably going to take me a minute or two. But what I want to happen when I get to the end of this, all this food, is I want it now to say, oh dear, there isn't another room to go into. So what should happen, it should come up with a message that says, you finished all of the rooms, game over. So down there, whoops, try and fit the space back up there, across, up. Okay, I'm sure there's a, a sensible way to get around this maze as quickly as possible. I'm sure this isn't it. So up here, up there. And you see why the advantage of having a room, a test room, because if, if, if every single time you want to test the game, you have to eat every single piece of food, that can sort of get quite wearing. Just like watching me eat all of the pieces of food can get quite wearing as well. So down, that way, that way, down, cross there, down, back up, over here, and the last few pieces of food. And it now says, it's look, there isn't another room to go into, well done, you've got to the end, okay, and the game finishes.